And although the princess has come home, she is still remaining quiet on where she was during her missing time, but frankly, I do not care. She's got that look at me, I'm back attitude, and it reflects in her style. You know it. She was seen returning to the castle, rocking those possibly with kidnapped leggings, all while sporting a I might have just run away and ran out of money <laughs> hooded cloak. What do you think she's going to be wearing at the wedding? No idea, but no doubt it will compliment her chosen spouse's home kingdom. That's right. Princess Desdemona has finally made her choice, and it's Praetor Cargan of the Marvog Empire. I knew it was going to be them. It was the obvious choice from the get-go. So obviously obvious. So, so long, Prince Phineas Pomp of the Petrard Kingdom. You just didn't make the cut. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm, See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Bye. So, she made her choice. Her life is filled with intrigue, and I feel like I am now somehow intertwined with her fate's path. Oh well, off to go see what the gang's up to. Bye! There's a note from Dad. Back to the guard shed for me. Wait a minute, where's the chronometer? I always leave it right here. Nope. Not in or under there. It's not in there. There it is. What's it doing under the bed? Spooky. I, I don't remember putting it there. Wait, what time is it? I don't want to be late. For a time machine, you'd think they could have at least put a clock on it somewhere. This whole wretched endeavor has been a disgrace, not only to Prince Phineas and myself, but to the entire history of Petrard. King Phineas and Queen Buttermilk will not sit idly by while their royal lineage is dragged through the mud. Well, you know what they say, you win some, you lose some. All's fair in love and war. Other cliche sayings. Keep your chin up, Prince Phineas. You'll find someone. Say what you will. Your words and your sweet-smelling city will soon be drowned out by the musk of the sulfur mines of Petrard. May your home be exploded by a bottle of fine Petrardian fizzy. Well, that's not great. Hello, Will. What? No more sparkly suit? It was a rental. Besides, today I'm here in a different capacity, to help coordinate the royal wedding. You have a lot of jobs, Mike. And wedding planning is my least favorite out of all of them. 
Tell you what, why don't you be the wedding planner for the day? What do you think? I think it's very irresponsible to get a 12-year-old girl to do two grown men separate jobs. All you have to do is choose the music, decorations, and food menu for the big event. It's simple, just let in the one you like the best. Or the one you think the groom would like best. Or who the bride will like. I'm sure it's not really going to affect anything. Or it might. See, it's simple. Do you want me to explain it again? Well, I won't. The only thing I hate more than wedding planning is talking about wedding planning. You'll pick it up, you'll see. The wedding musicians will be coming by for you to choose first. Here's the gold. See you later, Lil. Whoa, this gig pays great! The money's not for you. There's three choices for music, food, and decor, and each comes with its own price tag. The gold is the budget for the wedding. Do I have enough money to just pick the most expensive choices? The most expensive choices are going to be the best, right? Not necessarily. And no, you don't have enough. Anything over budget will have to come out of your own pocket. I see. But if there's any money left over, you get to keep it. I see. We're on a tight timeline, so keep an eye on your action points. You've got four per round, so that's talking to everybody once, or to two folks twice. You get the idea. Need that run by you one more time? Remember, you do the choosing. I'll be here to record your choice and keep track of the budget. Okay, Lil, it's no biggie. Just choose the three most important elements of any wedding and try not to stress that it's a royal one. You go- Hello, young lady, the name is Jacob Fiddlestein and me and my accordion here play all the polka conga you kids are so crazy about these days. A one and two and polka conga two and three and polka conga three and one and polka conga hey! Hoy, I nearly winded myself there. Hello, hi, hello. My name is Suzette Courgette and I sing um, with my voice. I do the slow songs and the nice songs and some of the ones you know. Vlad Extreme here, mate. I know what you're thinking. What is the baddest, metalist bad boy of death metal playing some skit royal wedding? Well, I ain't here just to collect a big paycheck, mate. I'm here to stick it to the bourgeoisie and not take any of their crap, mate. Rock and roll all life long. As it turns out, I left my amplifier on the bus, mate. It must be sitting there right next to all my awards and trophies, mate. So let's cut the fuss and let me through, right? Because as we all know, everybody likes the sound of what Daddy Vladdy is putting down. Extreme! Have you made up your mind? Um, so lovely of you. I'll start warming up right now. Good choice, maybe. I'll write this down and be back when the next group turns up. See ya, kid. Well, if it isn't THE Edward, THE Great Magician. Got another group of brats to entertain? Where are you pulling a rabbit out of now? I'm afraid I've put my days of magic and illusions behind me. You got kicked out of the Magician's Union, didn't you? Yes, I did. Seems people preferred the actual dark arts to my... light entertainment. No matter, though, I've got a new career now. Working at your parents' garden shop? Psh, they wish. I'm a wedding officiant. I'm here to officiate the royal wedding. 
Really? You? Uh, I mean, you are? I am! So it's the Edward, the wedding officiant now, is it? Of course it isn't! Do you know how ridiculous it was for me to have the Edward, the magician, as my name? It was so redundant! I can't believe nobody ever told me! Two of these? I must have looked like an idiot! Well, when you put it that way... So now it's just Edward the Official Officiant, with only one the, thank you very much. Having official and officiant is also redundant. It is? Why didn't anyone ever tell me that? I'm telling you now. What am I going to do about my 5,000 brand new business cards? Can't you cancel the printing? I did them by hand! What made you want to become a wedding officiant? This morning, someone from the castle came into my parents' shop to place a big order of flowers for the royal wedding, and that's when I got to thinking. One three-hour course at the Elven Community College later, and here I am. It's my first gig as an officiant. Pretty exciting to get to officiate the royal wedding. Well, technically, I wasn't hired. But maybe it's a detail they left to the last minute and need someone desperately. I don't think weddings usually work that way. Hello, Councilwoman Ash? I'm sorry to bug you on such a busy day, but... Mill! Thank goodness you called. Seems in all the chaos of organizing this wedding so fast, we forgot to hire someone to officiate the ceremony. Do you know anyone who could do the job last minute? This has got to be a joke, right? I never joke, Lil. Well, that's not true. I often share a laugh with my fellow political and high society types. But this is beside the point. Find someone now, and quickly, and don't dally. Well, Eddie, it seems dreams do come true. They forgot to hire an officiant and are looking for someone to work the gig. Think you got what it takes? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes! See, Bob and Dad, I knew hard work and persistence would pay off in the end. Let's chalk this one up to dumb luck. Good luck, Edward. Thanks again, friend! We're not friends! Oh my god, are Edward and I friends? Hello there, I'm back. On to the decorator candidates. I don't have to tell you how important the interior decorations and overall aesthetic of a wedding can be. I don't have to tell you, because I refuse to tell you. Anyways, here they are, take your shot. Hello again, Mum! Thought I'd see my way down to do some decorating for the royal wedding! Ain't much of a decorate per se, but I got my cerulean blue, blood red, and cadmium green with me. So I'd go do something with them, I suppose. Hello! I've got some grand ideas, you know, for how the royal wedding should be. You might not know it, but I read all the latest wedding magazines down at the salon when I'm getting the old do done. And apparently what's in these days is neat. Big bold slabs of meat on the wall. It gives things a real abattoir feel, so they say. So I guess I'd go with that. Who am I, you ask? Only the editor of the biggest wedding magazine in circulation right now. There's no one else who can do the royal wedding justice, darling. Surely you've seen my work. Just don't look in last year's issue, darling. I went on a real tangent about slaughterhouses one night, and my team printed everything I said. Blame the Quaaludes. This year, darling, we'll do something daring. Daring and bold, darling. Can you feel it? Here's my Pinterest board, which is totally a thing that exists in the world of this game. Ha 
Have you made up your mind? <sighs> Fine. I will decorate your provincial little affair. And it's set in stone. I'll write this down and be back with the next group. See ya, kid. It is I, Articulus Flame Hands, a contestant you did not find worthy on the hit show So You Think You Can Save a Princess. Not going to lie, that really stung. In any case, I have a message to deliver to the High Council of the Mages Guild. So if there's nothing else, I will be on my way. Oh, it is getting harder and harder for mages to communicate openly, so everyone is resorting to this secret message, cloak and dagger nonsense. Between us, there's talk of mages dabbling in the magic that dares not speak its name. I kind of felt like something was wrong with the mages guild, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Yes, it is still within control, but if this dark faction keeps pursuing its dark goals, dark days lie ahead. Dark. This is the message I have been charged to deliver to the High Council of the Mages Guild. No use in trying to read it, though. It is concealed by a web of secretive spells and codes that would be incredibly difficult to untangle. What about with the dun-dun-dun decoder ring? Well, that would probably do it. Hey, can I see the letter you're delivering? Incredible! Let me see. Wait. What? No! This cannot be true. These renegade mages are more deeply embedded than I thought! I was sent to deliver this? Dear child, thank you for saving me from myself. I must flee and work to weed out the bad actors within the guild. Dark days lie ahead. Be careful. Your name was also mentioned in the letter. All right, kid, can you feel it? We're almost done. This is the last hellish choice you'll have to make as a wedding planner. I, for one, cannot wait to be finished. Just hurry up and pick the food option for the wedding so we can get out of here. I'm not allowed to leave. Monty's has the soup. That's all I'm allowed to say. Good afternoon. I am here today representing Catering Corp regarding a contract to provide the sustenance for the large gathering known as the Royal Wedding. Catering Corp is willing to provide the base amount of calories needed to sustain such a high capacity event in return for appropriate remuneration. I am accompanied by samples of our food and a detailed list of ingredients available upon request. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle François Saint-Français, head waiter à la chaise de la maison. We provide the finest and the fanciest of delicacies for the newly married royal couple and their guests. Only the smallest portions for the highest prices, of course. Very chichi pompon for the snootiest of people. A place someone like you or anyone you know would never get into, no matter how hard you tried. Here is the tasting menu, printed on the skin of a rarest hippogriff. Endangered mythical creature, fancy. Ah. 
Have you made up your mind? Ah, c'est magnifique! <laughs> Thank God this nightmare of a job is over. All the rest of you go home. Good choosing, kid. Well, at least I hope it's good. I wouldn't want to be the one responsible for messing up something like a royal wedding. Anyways, goodbye. I am a citizen of the sprawl. I have nothing to declare on my person, and I demand to be allowed entry. I have no further statement to make beyond the following. I am a citizen of the sprawl. I have nothing to declare on my person, and I demand to be allowed entry. You're kind of intense, aren't you? I am a free goblin living in a free land. Or so the narrative we've all been fed for decades would lead me to believe. Now will you let me in or not? The treatment of my people, and indeed most all non-humans in the sprawl, is a disgrace. A national embarrassment. If I do not have the freedom to come and go from my home as I please, what do I have? So once again I say to you, I am a citizen of the sprawl. I have nothing to declare on my person and I demand to be allowed entry. Look, I agree that it's awful that non-humans have been singled out by this decree. Is there any way you could help me pay the fine that I would be charged by letting you in? I will have no part in paying one cent towards the draconian and completely illegal tax on my personhood. Hmm, intriguing. You seem to be caught between a rock and another equally hard rock. Tell you what, I'll take care of the fine if you let him in. I just gotta see what the GLA has planned. What the heck is the GLA? Goblin Liberation Army? Geez, you don't pay attention to these people at all, do you? It's just click, click, click with you, isn't it? Are you part of this Liberation Army? Founding member! Well, not really, but of course I know about them. I don't just sit down here reading and writing Yelp reviews for Monty's. Although I do that a lot, too. You'll pay if I let him in? Bingo! Let me just find my wallet. You should come by the Goblin Liberation Army Headquarters sometime. Here's the password. Come! It will open your eyes to what's happening in the sprawl! Time for, uh, say, you there, little girl. I, I need to get to the other side of the sprawl without delay. I need you to listen to me. This is time sensitive. I know you got your instructions, but it's important that I get going quickly. I swear someone was supposed to give you guys a heads up that I was coming. Let me spell it out for you. I went to school to become an ice sculptor. My parents said, you'll never make a living at it. And they were right. Until the royal wedding, that is. This is my big break. I got the ice, I sculpted it, now I have to deliver it. It's hot out. Just let me through so I can prove my parents wrong. Sounds like you're under a lot of pressure. I'll try to get you on your way. Thank you. You have been an immeasurable help in the battle for my parents' approval. I can't thank you enough. Sorry for coming in hot. Weddings are the worst. If you can get close enough, take a look at my sculpture. I'll throw something in there just for you. Gotta go. They 
still wrote Kapla there at the end. I have a very bad feeling about this. I need to get out of here, and fast. Think, Lil, think. The line is dead? What do I do? This one doesn't work? Are you kidding me? What the f was that? That was next level. I'm gonna go down to the dig site to throw this stupid time machine down a deep hole. Okay, Lil, get it together. You can still do this. You've got to take it back. Sh got too real with your chronometer 3000 thing today. I don't want it anymore. Hi, B. So nice to see you, B. Your paper in the Journal of Dwarven Medicine was a revelation, B. Well, excuse me, but I was just pulled into what I'm guessing was a parallel dimension and was almost murdered by a demon. Hmm, how unfortunate. I always wondered what the byproduct of St. Bartholomew Inglebrook's lunar incantation would have on the relationship between time and interplanar folding. Stop it. I don't care about any of that. Just take it back. I'm sorry, I truly am, but we've come too far. I'm sorry I've been absent, but I've been watching, and the readings I've been receiving have been very promising. I don't care. But you would care if everything and everyone you knew and loved was at risk. Everything might seem like we're in a storybook, but open your eyes. We're on the verge of a civil war from inside the walls. And if you hadn't heard, the princess just pissed off some very powerful people. It is in your best interest to continue to help me with the device. Because who knows when we will need to rewind time and un something more important than which nobody you chose to send to the dungeon today. And you're here, after allegedly going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an interplanar demon. I trust you. I'm not gonna keep doing this forever. You and everyone else are gonna owe me a childhood, you know? Keep helping me with the Chronometer 3000, and we can see about making that happen for you. Hello? Hello? I brought the orange slices! Was today a regular meeting day, or one of those top secret planning for what's gonna happen at the princess's wedding days? Is anybody here? I'm here. 
Are you here for the meeting? I don't think so. Oh, then you can't have any orange slices. Those aren't orange slices. Those are just the rinds. I got hungry. LA leader wrote that. At least, I'm sure that troll over there didn't. I wonder what it means. This hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous hat. My journey, it continues. You've been at this a while. You should have enough cash by now to power up your arsenal. Take a look. She is. The little guardsman who spoke to the princess and secured the union between the Sprawl and the great Marvog Empire. Yeah, I did. Told her just what to do and she listened to my every word. I admire your complete lack of modesty. Modesty is such an ugly thing. Let us celebrate with a tankard of blood wine. Kapla! Uh, I'm 12. I can't drink alcohol. Ha <laughs> ha, never fear, there is no alcohol in Marvok blood wine. Just blood, in a big cup called a tankard. Yeah, I'm a hard pass on that. Ha <laughs> ha, very well. There will be much blood wine at the royal wedding where this Sprawl and Marvok tie their fortunes together forever. Let us raise a glass to the gatekeeper who brought us all together this day. Kapla. Did a mouse sneeze somewhere? Come, child, louder and with fury! Kapla! Too furious, far too furious. We are not at war. Be careful shrieking like that. But as we say in Marvog, better to be too furious than not to be furious at all. I'm exhausted. I shall now recite the Marvog Pledge of Unwavering Loyalty, as is our custom. And that's my cue to leave. Today's cocktail special is... Uh, not relevant to you, Lil. Sorry. And we just ran out of milk. Sorry again. Lil, can you be on the lookout for a health inspector? They can look like anybody. How about you whistle if you think you've identified one? I can't whistle. Well, then scream health inspector at the top of your lungs. I'll see what I can do. I think I've done everything I need to do, but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay? <laughs> <laughs> 